Hello, welcome to Free School Exam Preparation. Today we're going to talk about Edexcel International AS and A Levels Statistics 1. In this lecture, we're going to continue with Chapter 3, Probability. So we will talk about tree diagrams in this lecture. So tree diagram is used to represent information about consecutive events. So let's say if we have event A, and then we have event B. So we can think about two situations. The first situation is event A has occurred, and the second situation is event A hasn't happened. And under the event that A has happened, we have B happens, B hasn't happened. And then we have B happens under the condition that A hasn't happened, and also B hasn't happened under the condition that A hasn't happened. Okay, so here we have the probability of A happens. This one will be the probability of A hasn't happened. So we have PA plus PA prime equals to 1. And this one will be the probability of B happens under the condition A has happened. So here will be PB prime A. And this one will be PBA prime. And here we have PB prime A prime. Okay, and also we have the definitions of conditional probability, right? So from this, we are able to calculate A intersects B. A intersects B prime, A prime intersects B, and A prime intersects B prime. Probably we can write this one out. So P, B under the condition A equals to probability A intersects B, and here we have P, A. And probability of B prime under the condition of A equals to P, A intersects B prime. And here we have PA. Okay, and also PBA prime. So this one equals to P intersect, uh, B intersects A prime over PA prime. And here we have PB prime, A prime. So this one equals to probability of B prime intersects A prime over the probability of A prime. Okay, we can also look at the probability of B. So here we can think about this Venn diagram. So this is A, this is B, right? So we can divide B into two parts. So the first one is this part. And the second part, um, so let's shade it with a different color, this one. So this part is A intersects B. And this one is B intersects A prime. So because these two are mutually exclusive, so we can write PB as P A intersects B and plus PB intersects A prime. Okay, and also if we look at this probability of B over, uh, sorry, under the condition of A plus the probability of B prime under the condition of A. And we can use the formula here, so it will be PA. And the top here is PA intersects B and plus PA intersects B prime. Right? Similarly, just by using this thing for A. So we have PA equals to PA intersects B and plus P probability of A intersects B prime. Okay, so the top will be PA. So this one will be PA, PA and equals to 1. And also if we look at these two, PB under the condition A prime and plus PB prime under the condition of A prime. So we'll have probability of A prime, and top here we'll have P, B intersects A prime, and plus P, B intersects, uh, P, B prime intersects A prime. So now you can think about this set A prime. So you can just use A prime here, right? So A prime equals to probability of A prime intersects B plus probability of A prime intersects B prime. So this one will be P, A prime, P, A prime, also equal to 1. Okay, so that's everything about the tree diagram. And now we just need to use tree diagram to solve some problems. So the first one is from page 79, question 3. So we have a bag which contains 20 coins. 10 of them are 25 cents. 6 of them are 10 cents coins. And 4 of them are 5 cent coins. And Sadia takes 2 of the coins and random from the bag. Work out the probability that she takes two five cent coins. Okay, so we can think about the first event is she takes out a five cent coin in the first time. And the second event, B, is she takes out a coin 
uh, which is five cent second time. Okay, so now we can draw this tree diagram. So we have A and not A. And here we have B and not B, and we have B, not B. Okay, and then for the probability of A, so that means the first time she takes a five cent coin, right? So this will be four over 20, because we have four five cent coins, and we have 20 coins in total. And then we can calculate the probability of B under the condition A. So that means she has already taken out a five cent coin. So in this case, we only have 19 coins left in the bag, and we have only three five cent coins left in the bag, right? So this will be three over 19. Okay, and then we are looking for, this is probability A intersects B. Okay, so probability B under the condition A equals to the intersection of these two over probability of A. Okay, so this one will be probability of B under the condition of A and times the probability of A, which is 4 over 20. So this is 1, 5. So we have 3 over 95. Okay, so that's for question A. Now let's take a look at question B. So the probability is the total value of the two coins is 20 cents or less. Okay, so think about these two coins, right? So if we have one coin is 25 cents, so no matter what, we can't meet this requirement. However, if none of them are 25 cents, so we can have two 10 cents, two 5 cents, one 10 cent, one 5 cent. So both all these situations satisfy this requirement. So we'll have our event A. So that is a 25 cent coin is taken out in the first time. And also we can have our event B, which is a 25 cent coin taken out the second time. Okay, so now we draw this tree diagram. So we have A, A prime. And here we have B, B prime. And then we all have this B, B prime. Okay, so what will be our, the probability that we are looking for? So the first time we can't have A, so it should be A prime. The second time, we can't have B, right? So that will be the intersection of A prime and B prime. Okay, so in order to calculate this one, we can use the conditional probability. So we know probability of A um, prime intersects B prime over, so because A happens first, right? So we have probability of A prime. So this one equals to probability of B prime under the condition of A prime. Okay, so how do we do this calculation? So first, probability of A prime. So that means the first time we are not taking out a 25 cent coin. So in total, we have 20 coins. 10 of them are not, so it's one over two. And the probability of B prime under the condition of A prime. So that means we've already taken out one coin, which is not 25 cent. And now we are taking out the second coin, which is also not 25 cent. So we have 19 coins in total. And how many are not 20, uh, 25 cent in the second time? So there are only nine left because one is already taken out in the first time, right? So we have nine over 19. So the probability of A prime intersects B prime will be the product of these two. So will be nine over 38. Okay, so that's how we do question B. Next one, question five. So here we have the probability of B under the condition of A is 0 0.45. It's showing this tree diagram really. Okay, so maybe we can try to fill in this tree diagram and then we can do this calculation. Here's 0 0.7. So according to what we talked in the first slide, this will be one minus 0 0.7. And this one will be one minus 0 0.45. And this one will be one minus 0 0.35. Okay, so we can write this out. First, we are looking for probability A intersects B. So we know A happens really, right? So we'll have this conditional probability on A, and here should be B. So this will be probability of A intersects B over probability of A. Okay, so probability of A, uh, let's write this. Probability of A intersects B equals to the product of these two. So PA equals to 0 0.7. PB under the condition of A equals to 0 
Okay, so this one will be uh, 310.315. Okay, so that's for the uh, first uh, probability. For the second one, so we have A prime intersects B prime. So we can do the same trick, right? So we have this A prime on the condition, and here we have B prime. So this one equals to B, uh, probability of A prime intersects B prime over the probability of A prime. So probability of A prime intersects B prime equals to probability of A prime based on this diagram, 0 0.3. Probability of B prime under the condition of A prime, so it's this 0 0.65. So this will be uh, 195, 0 0.195. Okay, next question. So probability of A under the condition of B. Because we know A is a first event, so in this case, we can translate this into the condition of A. Okay, so this actually is a very useful trick. So we have A intersects B over PB, right? So this is just a definition. We didn't do anything special. And for probability of A intersects B, we know this already, so maybe we can keep for now. And how about probability of B? So we talked about in the previous slide, so think about this Venn diagram, right? So we have A and B, so we separate B into this part and this part. So we have the probability of B intersects A, and probability of B intersects A prime. Okay, now we use two conditional probability to represent the denominator. So we have P A intersects B. So what is P? Uh, okay, we can also use this, doesn't matter. So what is P B intersects A prime? So this one will be over P A prime, right? Equals to probability of B under the condition of A prime. Okay, so we have P B A prime. Okay, and for P, A intersects B, you can use this one as well. But because we got the number, so we can calculate, um, we can just plug in the number. But if we don't have this number, so we can write as P, A, and times P, B, A. And here will be P, A, and times P, B, A. And this one is P, B, uh, A, sorry, we have a P, A prime here. And plus P, A prime and times probability of B A prime. Okay, so now we can just plug in the number. So the top we know already it's 0 0.315 and this is 0 0.315. And this one, P A prime is 0 0.3. And P B um, under the condition of A prime, so this is 0 0.35, right? Just based on this one. Okay, so we can do a calculation. So we have 0 0.315. And here we have 0 0.105 plus 0 0.315. So 0 0.420. And probably we can divide 7 first, um, 60, and for 7, um, 45. Okay, and then we can divide 15, so 3 over 4. So the answer should be 3 over 4. Actually, this is a very, very important formula, this one. Okay, next question. Question eight, and this is on page 80. So we have Alina, um, and she has two coins, and one is fair with a head on one side and a tail on the other side. The second is a trick coin and has a tail on both sides. Alina picks up one of the coin at random and flips it. Finds the probability that it lands heads up. Okay, so here are two events. The first event is to pick up the fair coin. Right, so what will be A prime? A prime will be the event pick up the trick coin. Okay, and then we have the second event, B. So that means we have a head up. So what will be B prime? So B prime will be tail up. Okay, so now we draw this tree diagram. So here will be A, A prime, and then we have B, B prime, and this one we have B, B prime. Okay, so what's the probability of picking up the fair coin? So will be one over two. 
So this will also be 1 over 2. Okay, and then what's the probability of having a head up if we know this is fair, right? So this will be 1 over 2. And for tail up, it's 1 over 2. So what will be the probability of head up if we have a trick coin picked up? So this will be 0 because there is no head, right? So both sides are tail. So this one will be 1. Okay, so for question A, so find the probability that it lands head up. So we have PB. And according to what we talked in the previous slide, so we have P intersects A and plus PB intersects A prime. So this one equals to P, uh, let's write this one if you're not familiar with this, PB under the condition of A equals to PB intersects A and PA, right? So this one will be PA times PB under the condition of A. And here we have PB under the condition of A prime equals to PB intersects A prime, PA prime. So we'll have this is PA prime and times PB under the condition of A prime. Okay, PA equals to 1 over 2. PB under the condition of A is this one, so it's 1 over 2. And PA prime is 1 over 2. PB under the condition of A prime is 0. So the answer will be 1 over 4. Okay, so now let's take a look at question B. So given that it's, it's tail up, so the condition will be B prime, right? Because it's tails up. And we want to find the probability to pick up the fair coin. So here should be A. Okay, and then this one will be the probability of A intersects B prime over PB prime. Okay, so what will be PB prime? PB prime will be 1 minus PB. Or if you want to use uh, conditional probability, so this one equals to B prime intersects A and plus PB prime intersects A prime. And the top will have this PA, uh, sorry, let's write this way, PB prime under the condition of A and times PA. Okay, so PB prime uh, intersects A, so it's the same as the top, so B prime under the condition of A times PA. And here we have P B prime under the condition of A prime times P A prime. Okay, top is P B prime under the condition of A times P A. Okay, so what will be the result? So P A equals to 1 over 2. And B prime under the condition A is this one, right? So it's 1 over 2. And same thing here. So we have 1 over 2 times 1 over 2. And PA prime is 1 over 2. B prime under the condition of A prime is 1. So here P1. So we have 1 over 4. 1 over 4 plus 1 over 2. So we can times 4. So it will be 1 plus 1 plus 2, 3. Okay, so the answer should be 1 over 3. So that's how we do question 8. Question 9. So a bag contains four blue balls and seven green ones. A ball is selected at random and its color is recorded. The ball is not replaced, so that means we take it out, we don't put it back anymore. A second ball is selected at random, its color is recorded. Find the probability that the second ball is green. Okay, so let's talk about these two events. The first event is the ball is blue. The second event will be the ball is green. Okay, so let's just draw this diagram here. So the first one is ball is blue, right? So here will be not blue. So maybe we can just use A prime to represent. And then under this condition, we have ball is green. The second ball is green. So this is second time. This is the first time. And here we have B prime. And this one we have B and B prime as well. Okay, so what is this probability? The second ball is green, so we are calculating PB. Now let's try to fill in the number. So what is the probability of A? So that means first time is blue, so it's 4 over 11. So this one will be 7 over 11. Here, PB under the condition of A. So that means we know the first time is blue, and the second time when the probability is green. 
So this one equals to PA over PB intersects A. And also it equals to, as we just mentioned, we, there are only 10 volts left. And we know the first time is blue, second time is green. So we only have, we still have seven green balls left, right? Okay, so how about PB prime A? So this one equals to PB prime intersects A and PA. So that means we know the first time is blue, the second time is also blue. So we have 10 here, in total 10 balls left for the second time. And how many blue left? So we have three. Okay, and then we have this PB A prime. So this one equals to P A prime and P B intersects A prime. So we know the first time is green and the second time is also green. What will be the probability? So this one will be 10 and then we only have six balls, uh, six green balls left for the second time, right? And this one P B prime A prime. So this one will be P B prime intersects A prime, P A prime, so will be 4 over 10. Okay, so now let's do this calculation. So P B equals to P B intersects A and plus P B intersects A prime. So P B intersects A, so equals to P A times P B under the condition of A. And this one will be P A prime times P B under the condition of A prime. Okay, so P A equals to 4 over 11. P B A equals to 7 over 10. And P A prime, 7 over 11. P B under the condition A prime is 6 over 10. Okay, so we have 1, 1, 0, 7 times 10. So it will be 7 over 11. So that's for the first question. And then both are green, uh, given the second is green. So we want to find the probability both are green given the second, okay. So we have probability of, uh, so we know the second time is green, right? So it should be B. And here we should have A prime intersects B. Why is that? That means A prime is the first time is green and B is the second time is green. Okay, so this one equals to probability of A prime intersects B intersects B over probability of B. So the top is just probability of A prime intersects B. And here we have the probability of B. Okay, so uh, maybe we can find out what is probability of A prime intersects B based on this one here. So we'll have 6 over 10 times probability of A prime, 7 over 11. And probability of B is 7 over 11. So this will be 3 over 5. Okay, so that's how we do this question 9. Next one, question 11. So there is a genetic condition which is known to be present in 4% of a population. And a test is developed to help find whether or not someone has this genetic condition. So if a person has a condition, the test is positive with probability 0.9. Okay, so maybe we can draw this tree diagram. So what will be this event A? Event A is we have this uh, genetic condition, so it means present. So A prime will be not present. Okay, and also we have B. So B will be positive. And B prime will be tested negative. Okay, so here we have B, B prime, and B, B prime. Okay, so 4% is present. So here will be 4%. And this one will be 96%. And for this condition, person has the condition, the test is positive with probability 0.9. So we know probability of B under the condition A equals to 0.9. So here will be 0.9. So this one will be 0.1. A person doesn't have the condition, the test is positive with positive probability 0.02. So it's a false positive. So probability of B under the condition, uh, sorry, yeah, the person doesn't have this condition, so this equals to 0 
0.02. So here will be 0.98. Okay, a person is selected at random uh, and tested for this condition. Find the probability that the test is negative. So we want to find out the probability of B prime. So this one equals to the probability of B prime intersects A and plus the probability of B prime intersects A prime. So this one equals to, we can use a conditional probability, probability of, uh, let's do this way. Okay, so the probability of B prime under the condition of A equals to probability of B prime intersects A over probability of A, right? So this one equals to probability of A and times probability of B prime under the condition of A, so that will be 0 0.1, so it's this one. And plus, so here will be um, under the condition of A prime, right? So we have probability B prime intersects A prime, so here is P A prime. Okay, so P A prime is 96%, and this one conditional probability, so will be 0 0.98. Okay, so here we can just use calculator. So this one will be 0 0.9448. Okay, question C. So a doctor randomly selects a person from the population and tests for the condition. Given that the test is negative, find the probability the person does have the condition. Okay, so that means the condition here is negative, right? So we'll have B prime. And then we want to find out the person has a condition. So here should be A. Okay, so this one equals to the probability of A intersects B prime and over the probability of B prime. Okay, so we know what is P B prime, right? So it's 0 0.9448. We just need to find out the top. So we can write this P uh, B prime under the condition of A equals to P A intersects B prime over PA. Okay, so the top will be PA times P, B prime under the condition of A. PA is 4%. And PB prime under the condition of A is this number, which is 0 0.1. Okay, so we can use the calculator. So this one equals to 0 0.00423. Okay, so let's Take a look at question D. So we want to comment on the effectiveness of the test. So think about this. We don't know if this person has this genetic condition or not, right? However, we can only look at the test result. So we want to eliminate two situations. The first one is false positive. So that means under the condition that this test is positive, the person has no genetic condition. And also, we want to eliminate the false negative. So that means under this condition, uh, sorry, under this uh, condition that the test is uh, negative, the person has this genetic situation. So for the second case, we calculated this already. So that is 0 0.00423. So this is called false negative. Okay, so this actually is pretty low. And how about the false positive? So we can do the calculation. Here will be PB. And then here we have PA prime intersects B. Okay, so PB we know it equals to 1 minus PB prime 0 0.9448. And this one will have P A, uh, B under the condition of A prime times PA prime. Okay, so we have 0 0.0552. And PB under the condition A prime is this number, right? So which is 0 0.02. And times PA prime is 0 0.96. And now we just use the calculator. So what are we going to have? 0 0.02 times 0 0.96 over 0 0.0552. So we have 0 0.3478. Okay, actually this is pretty high. So we will say for the, um, this test, the false negative is quite low. However, the false positive is quite high.
So that means sometimes, you know, we have the result positive, but this person has no genetic condition. Okay, so that's everything for this lecture. We hope you have enjoyed it and wish you good luck with your exam. If you are interested, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Free School Exam Preparation. Thank you.